I'm opening the house church reports with a report from reaching out. <clears throat> and I'll start with a verse from Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am your God. Do not be dismayed, for I am with you. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold, uphold you with my righteous right hand. For the house churches, the four marks of the church are worship and mission, nurture, and fellowship are a framework around which we can organize, at least in uh, reaching out, we use these as the framework for our meetings. Uh, they're included in each meeting, and sometimes the order changes and the time allotted to each section also varies, but we work with those uh, four essential features uh, throughout our, our, our reaching out house church ministry. Over the last year, we've lost a few members. This year, the passing of John and Joyce Lyons was very deeply felt. We've also tried to especially reconsider and broaden the meaning and the idea of mission. Uh, one aim has been that uh, we would be more focused on activities within the Trinity congregation. Uh, some members have occasionally stepped in and supported other Trinity groups, such as the Clothes Closet or visiting members. Uh, we, we, do, <laughs> we do wonderfully well on uh, worship and nurture and fellowship because uh, we got a lot of experience with each other. We've got a lot of resources in the people in the Reaching Out House Church that uh, bring all these to the fore. But we do have a little trouble with uh, transportation and uh, uh, health concerns and everything to really get involved and in, fully in the mission as we would like. And so we're continually working and reviewing that. We've uh, done a couple of books this uh, last year. The, actually, um, we spent considerably more time on the two that were in the church. The last one we had on the um, um, "You're Changing the World If You Don't Even If You Don't Know It or Care for It," and the one before that about uh, uh, how does how does Advent fit into Lent or Lent fit into Advent, whichever way it worked, and that was very. Uh, very meaningful to us, the full looking at those. We enjoy each other's birthdays and uh, celebrate other days with each other. Uh, I'm going to close this report with the words we use to end our meetings. Shalom, my friends. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Gardner, and I'm representing our congregation's Hearts and Hands Prayer Shawl Ministry. This year, we continue to find our scriptural challenge in an Old Testament verse from Lamentations 341. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven. The word hearts in our name signifies our prayers and blessings for those who receive the shawls, scarves, lap robes, and stoles. And the word hands signifies the various type of handwork used in the creation of these prayers. We particularly focus on two marks of the church, mission and fellowship. Here's how all of this works. We start with some knitting needles or crochet hooks some yarn, lots of different kinds and colors of yarn, 
in some directions. And we represent all skill levels. So we share ideas with each other and we support each other as we learn new stitches and patterns and work with different kinds of yarn. We meet on the third Monday evening of each month, mostly over Zoom, but sometimes in person, especially in the summer when the weather is warmer and it stays light longer at night. Our projects take shape and there's still works in progress. We laugh, love, and grow a Christian fellowship with each other. When projects are finished, we sew on special labels and bless them. Sometimes we do this individually, sometimes at gatherings or sometimes during Sunday worship. Then we wrap each prayer shawl in a colorful bag and attach a special note. Finally, we share the prayer shawls with people experiencing a difficult time, people grateful for a special joy, people of all ages, and people in our congregation, people around the world. And to date, more than 225 people have received our prayer shawls. So today, some of you have brought prayer shawls with you. And if you um, brought a prayer shawl, will you please stand or raise your hand? Thank you for bringing these to celebrate the ministry. Thank you. Okay, thank you to everybody. We need to know that each shawl has a special meaning and a special story to you. And we invite you to share some of your stories with each other's with each other as we gather for coffee and conversation in the commons after worship. And now Linda would like to share her special story with us. In 2011, I had a knee replacement and Hearts and Hands shared this lovely lilac shawl that had been knit by Mary Louise Fisher whom many of you I know will remember. Four years later, in 2015, we had a blessing of prayer shawls during worship. Mary Louise had recently been diagnosed with cancer, and after the service, I asked her to come up to the table and to select a prayer shawl from Trinity. Without knowing, she selected a shawl that I had made so to me, this beautiful shawl is a reminder that the circle had been completed in a very special way. We're grateful to celebrate God's call to serve today. So please stay tuned for more information later on this month. Thank you. This is heavy. I want y'all to know. I'm from the, uh, uh, it's actually called uh, Light the Flame, uh, Mark's group. But it is our Keister and Bluestone backpack group. Thank you, Trinity. On behalf of all of the volunteers that are associated with this program, which are many. We have two sites. Uh, over a decade ago now, we started at Keister, and we actually began here in our own kitchen. Keister program has taken off uh, during, especially the last six, seven years, and even during the um, COVID, uh, had more food that had been going out. Take a minute for us uh, to see some of the very wholesome and nutritional things that we put in these bags each and every week. These are foodstuffs that oftentimes originate in, with the uh, Blue Ridge Food Bank and through our distributing uh, 
uh, arm called Hope Distributing, we gather food, uh, put these bags together, and then deliver them to needy families. In each school now, there are over 55 to, to 60 uh, children and families that receive food each and every week. Visualize, if you will, 4,000 of these bags that had went out last year because we as a congregation chose to start this program and to continue it uh, over a decade ago. Uh, that is, constitutes the, the largest number of uh, uh, bags in food that we've had so far, and it has been continuously growing. The school system, however, where we uh, uh, get our referrals for the families in need. Uh, uh, let us know, however, that the rate of free lunches now exceeds 72% of the student population in our schools. We serve probably a quarter of those kids with the, this extra food. Each year, Trinity um, and recently has increased the amount of money you have sent the amount of money to both of these programs at the beginning of the year. Our program, of course, budget exceeds that amount of money by four. And you would be, um, I know, not surprised to see the response that we have from the general public and from our own congregation and others. The object lesson this morning was quite apropos for, for this program because Trinity, uh, again, 13 years ago began this program. It was the first program for distributing food within the schools and it has grown now to every school in Harrisonburg schools and in Rockingham County when none existed before. It is really literally a loaves to fit and fishes story in a very real way. So again, thank you. We're looking forward to serving more kids this year and I'm sure we'll be able to do that. On behalf of the program, thank you again. I'm Susie Fend and I'm representing the clothes closet um, for Kathy who was supposed to be in Ireland but sadly uh, because of their recent concerns about her lymph nodes um, are here, but I'm speaking on behalf of the clothes closet. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew, Matthew 25, 34 through 36. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who will receive good things from my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. So the clothes closet has been clothing people through the Trinity clothes closet for 59 years, since 1965, as my dad reminded me this morning. I was four years old when the clothes closet began and it began in Mrs. Wilmerdorf and Miss Roller's basement up the hill on Dogwood Avenue, and it's had many, many, many transformations since then. For 59 years, we've been donating free clothes for those in need in our community. So far this year, we have served 940 clients. Each adult client takes a large garbage bag. They're all allowed to take a bag, each, each adult. The need is still as great as I've ever seen it. 
We are grateful to the many volunteers who make this mission possible. There's a very faithful group of nine volunteers who meet every Wednesday morning throughout the year from 9 to 11 to sort through the donations and get the racks set up for the evening enjoying fellowship and mission at the same time. Seven of those volunteers are Trinity members, including Janet Slough, Martha and Dick Kleckner, Jenny Reinhold, John Henderson, Sue Oram, and Kathy Gillette. Two of our volunteers are former uh, clients who are also now giving back in a very big way. Uh, Safi Malawi and Sandy Jones. In addition, we have two high school students with developmental disabilities and their special education teacher, Haley Watson, that come from Harrisonburg High School and they help every week during the school year. The students are developing work skills and learning good uh, social skills and proper behavior for working in a work, work culture. For evening support every Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30, Trinity uh, staffs two groups on uh, volunteers for the first and third Wednesdays. Um, the first Monday group includes Martha Kleckner, Dick Kleckner, John Henderson, and Sue and Rick Orham. On the third Wednesdays, Lauren Strauderman has gathered a group of us together, including Amy Lamonds, Ann Renard, Ann Radloff, Karen Lee, Lisa Wilson, and myself. The Closed Closet is also a meaningful mission engagement for a group of volunteers from Muhlenberg Lutheran Church. And Sandy Randolph is their coordinator, and from the youth group at Harrisonburg Baptist Church who for many years have staffed one evening a month. Their coordinator is the Associate Youth Director, Caitlin Belcher. Other volunteers work behind the scenes, washing clothes and doing minor repairs. Thank you, Teresa Harris and Patty Warner. And thank you to our wonderful administrators and assistant, a wonderful administrative assistants, Krista Bell and Victoria. The clothes closet is blessed is a mission that is blessed that we have regular volunteers for four out of five Wednesdays. Uh, sometimes there's a fifth Wednesday, so we solicit volunteers on those weeks uh, within Trinity to support the clients. Our semi-annual closed closet switchover day is coming up. It brings in different Trinity and community volunteers. The closed closet will welcome regular and one-time volunteers to help with this switchover day, which is coming up on September 28th at 9 a.m. until noon. We will bring out the warmer clothes for the season ahead please look at the What's Happening Now webpage to sign up. The Close Closet appreciates very much when Trinity and other community members make donations for this worthy cause. The mission couldn't exist without our wonderful donations. It's always amazing to me that um, we're never without. It just continues. This past year, Kathy, as we all know, um, has battled cancer for many months, and Martha Kleckner and Janet Slough have um, taken the helm, acting as mission leaders, and coordinated the entire program while Kathy was recuperating. They've made such a difference by being there consistently. Many thanks go to Martha and Janet for communicating and coordinating with all the groups that are integral to making the closed closet work during this time. Although house churches and closed closet marks groups, excuse me, while house churches and marks groups close for the month of September, the closed closet does not close. We continue throughout the year with few exceptions. Donations continue to roll in, and clients especially need clothes when the seasons change and when school starts. Volunteers are free to leave a mission whenever, but it would be helpful to know ahead of time for planning purposes. When the house churches and Marks groups reopen, we welcome anyone to join us. We would gladly have you wish, uh, enjoy uh, Wednesday evening with us in a way to serve our community in a very tangible way. Thank you. I, I was doing okay and thinking um, about coming up here until, until Linda made me cry, and then Dane didn't help, and thank you, Susie, you only exacerbated it. So if my voice gives out, it's their fault, not mine. You know, we do have a Bible verse in Centering Space. It's a Marx group, that's why I'm up here, right? Um, and it's a Bible verse, and it goes, get up, get out, and do something. And I don't know exactly where in the Bible you find those words, but I think... <laughs> I think it's a paraphrase of about half of the New Testament, right? Um, the uh, acronym for uh, 
uh, Centering Space Marx Group. Oh, good, I got a graphic. Great. Oh, yeah, you see the pretty digs up there, too. Right? It's a wonderful place to nap. Not that I know. Right? Um, is uh, care, contemplation, action, renewal, expression. Right? And under contemplation, I can mention that uh, we did a Flourishing on the Edge of Faith book. Uh, we did a study of that. We collaborated with Turning Tables to offer a three-week study of hospitality and breaking bread uh, using a, a book by, by Sarah Jungst called Breaking Bread, The Spiritual Significance of Food. We also uh, are using uh, the four centering space stations, which Mary Lou developed for the big event as a set of stations that are available in the Harbor Room up there. Um, and uh, they've been adapted as a series of weekly meditations that go out in the Friday email and uh, also are posted on the website. Uh, Jan R Richardson, I'm still doing contemplation, right? Jan Richardson illuminated uh, an Advent retreat online. And um, uh, I led a, uh, a study of Dietrich Bonhoeffer in, uh, in the spring during Lent. And by the way, that's going to continue in late September and through October with Reinhold Niemer, Niebuhr telling us what to think about white Christian nationalism. Uh, we have a meditation guide for use in the labyrinth, which actually occasionally gets weed whacked. So you can see it. I, I promise you, you can see it today anyway. Actually, after that rain, who knows? And uh, uh, we have updated it for general use and also uh, for Lent. Right? We hosted an open house in support of International Day of Transgender Remembrance, and that was quite moving and important. Under action, um, we have expanded the use of centering space for our young disciples. If you like Legos, <laughs> it's seventh heaven, right? Um, and uh, also have other activities to engage child's hands and bodies uh, while the service is live streamed, hey guys, right, um, from, from down here. Uh, we also supported the visit of David Lamott, a uh, former student of mine, to Massanetta Springs, and that was really quite interesting, quite wonderful. Got to take a fantastic bus ride. Um, and we also, post, uh, pardon me, posted a hotluck, no, hosted a potluck, right, uh, with Tim Seidel to learn more about the, the war in the Middle East, and that was in support of Harrisonburg's Mennonite community as they set out on their uh, trek to Washington, D.C., to show um, solidarity with the Palestinian people. Under uh, renewal, we offered several six-week yoga classes, and uh, they were attended by members of Trinity and the local community. And so if you look around you, the most flexible people were those who were part of that group. Um, Mark Dewey uh, hosted, uh, led a group of us pilgrims on the Camino de Santiago in Spain uh, back in April. And he's planning a second walk, and I would add to this, the center of that walk will in fact be a stationary week providing hospitality along the Camino. So if you're not up for the full 200 kilometers of walking, you could imagine yourself uh, spending some time there greeting those who are like four or five days out of, uh, of, of Santiago, right? Um, and uh, you know, keep in touch about that. Under expression, I'll wind up with this, uh, Julie McCray, uh, McClay, pardon me, offered an art journaling uh, uh, workshop, right? And um, we also offered a series of second Saturday workshops that focused on contemplation uh, through the arts, and for example, fiber arts, weaving, watercolor, and collage. And uh, on that subject, on the subject of weaving, we also offered a contemplative tour of the Sacred Threads uh, exhibit at the Virginia Quilt Museum. So if you are likely to hear the word and get up, get out and do something, Centering Space is likely to be there for you next year. So thank you. I'm Rick Orham, and I'm representing uh, the Sanctuary House Church. Um, I want to open with, a, uh, with two passages from Scripture. The first one is from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 
chapter 10, verse 19. You shall love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And then, as it is appropriate, since we are a Matthew 25 congregation, I'm going to repeat what uh, Susie had said. Our second scripture comes from Matthew 25, verse 34, 35. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Sanctuary House Church met bi-weekly from October uh, through August. Most meetings were held in person, either at the church or in members' homes, and occasionally virtually via Zoom. Our covenant for 2023-24 listed nine members. These include, in alphabetical order, Sally Boucher, Vicki and David Carruthers, Nancy Hopkins Garris, Sue and Rick Oram, Bill and Ginny Reinhold, and Hetty Reese. The remainder of this statement is organized according to the four marks of the church. The first mark is mission. Sanctuary House Church began approximately seven years ago as an effort to provide an actual sanctuary to immigrants to welcome the stranger in the Harrisonburg community who were threatened with deportation. Eventually, as it became clear that the Trinity Church House could not support such an effort, the mission evolved into primarily providing transportation of local immigrants and refugees to immigration courts in Northern Virginia or to local health providers through Vanita. This mission was curtailed during COVID. More recently, and thanks to the efforts of members Sally Boucher and Hedy Reese, our main mission over the last three years has evolved to helping a young single mother from Honduras with a now five-year-old daughter with severe developmental and physical challenges to obtain special care through local agencies and the UVA Medical Center in Charlottesville. Last year, the mother was able to apply for asylum thanks to the advice of a local attorney funded largely through contributions from members of Sanctuary House Church and other members of Trinity. Through the efforts of this legal team, the daughter applied for and received special immigrants juvenile status and along with her mother obtained social security numbers and work permits. The daughter is now enrolled in a special education program in the Rockingham County Schools, where she receives physical and occupational therapy. This past year, both mother and daughter have received dental care thanks to the generosity of Trinity members, local providers, and the University of Virginia Medical Center. Trinity, in effect, has become a refuge for this young mother seeking asylum and a better life for her daughter. This journey has not been without its special challenges, and Sanctuary House Church could not have provided help without the support of Trinity. And for that, on behalf of Marisol and Liliani, we thank you. The second mark is nurture. Our nurture activity for the year was a study, was a study of the book, Listening to the Heartbeat of God. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but a, uh, a a Celtic, a Celtic Spirituality by J. Philip Newell. This study was led by member Bill Reinhold. This is a change of pace for the group as we had previously focused our nurture activity on stories about immigrants and the immigrant experience. Listening for the Heartbeat of God traces the lines of Celtic spirituality from the British church in the fourth century through to the 20th century and the founder of the Iona community, George MacLeod. In effect, rather than focus our attention outward to the immigrant and refugee experience, we were invited through reading this book to focus inward on our own understanding of our spiritual journeys according to Celtic traditions at the heart of the modern Presbyterian Church. The third mark is worship. We opened every meeting with a devotion led by various members of the group. We celebrated Holy Communion twice, led by member Bill Reinhold, once in February and again in August. We also led Sunday service at Trinity on August 4th. The fourth mark is fellowship. We spent some time at every meeting sharing joys and concerns. Most of our meetings were conducted in person, usually at the church house, and several times at the homes of members and on a few occasions virtually via Zoom. During this time, members shared personal moments of joys and concerns, of personal and family challenges, as well as moments of positive joy and energy. 
We would also take the opportunity of, of these gatherings to recognize milestones in members' lives, such as birthdays, anniversaries, and other life transitions. In conclusion, there is a strong sense of shared community among members of the Sanctuary House Church, but I want to emphasize our interest in welcoming new members as we look forward to recalling this house church later this month. Please give us some prayerful consideration as you contemplate your participation in the life of our church in the new year. Good morning, everybody. Last but not least, my name is Lizzie Healy, and this is Teresa Harris, and we are here representing Turning Tables Marks Group. Um, we only called this Marks Group the first time last year, and we were definitely in a time of discernment, kind of figuring out what we wanted the Marks Group to be, but we knew that it wanted we wanted it to be centered around food, specifically supper, church, and then some other community engaging events centered around food. So we did do two supper churches. We did one that was French themed and then another one to use up Thanksgiving leftovers. We also held a Chex Mix making event at church to celebrate Advent. We did a bread making class. We did a book study. Um, we helped and then kind of as the new seasonal year came around, we kind of found a new role, mainly supporting the seasonal teams and whatever kind of support they needed that was food related or fellowship related. So we helped with the epiphany potluck. Um, we did the pancake dinner with the Lent team. And then we also did the Easter brunch um, over the summer. We have kind of helped to coordinate the Levitt picnics. Um, and then we also su supported um, in their, with our pastoral care team in terms of providing baskets and leftovers to shut-ins and people um, experiencing difficulties, whether that be with mobility or health challenges. Um, and then recently I found out about the Food Coalition Connection, which is a group chat online with a bunch of the different local food banks and people that supply food to people that don't have enough. And so basically, I think it was after Larry Barber's funeral, we had a lot left over as, al as always because God provides. And so we were like, what are we gonna do with all this food? So I put it in the chat and by the end of that day, somebody had said, hey, I live in Bridgewater, I can come pick it up. Um, and so they did. And so I think that'll be a really great resource for us moving forward as we find ourselves with plenty. We're very fortunate that on the organizational side, we've been able to replace very old and very heavy tables with lighter weight ones. We replaced mismatched silverware with matched silverware. Other groups took the lead in making sure that we had new dishes and new serving ware, and we have new tablecloths. So we have a beautiful place, and we have been feeding about 5,000, as is our mission, thanks to many blessings. While Lizzie and I kind of spearhead, and we seem to be everything kitchen and food, we don't do it on our own. We rely on everyone. So every time you sign up on a sign up genius to help with set up, clean up, or providing food, you are a part of this Marks group by default. And we have the most amazing people when it comes to any of those particular roles. And so we thank you because as you know, people are hungry in all kinds of ways. And we at Trinity, working with God who blesses, feed big crowds of more than 5,000 every day. Thank you.